Thank you, thank you very much. And uh, hi, g'day, yeah, hey, how you going? Um, so we've got a bit of a mixed crowd up the back there. Uh, how many actual Americans are you? Uh, is there, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, so it's a, bit of a smattering, which is good, um, because uh, it's uh, just good for me to know where these jokes are, are aimed at right now. Um, this, by the way, this week is 20, 20 years I've been doing this. 20 years. Oh, please, that's, that's good. Uh, hold it. Um, <laughs> no, not at all at once. Um, yeah, no, but did, a lot of people, when they, have you ever met a comedian before, madam? Have you ever met, like, uh, met one? Because a lot of people say, that must be the hardest job in the world. I could never do that. That must be the hardest job in the world. And it, it is, it's true. It is the hardest job in the world. If you're shit at it, like if you're fucking bad at it, it is the hardest job in the world. It, it's truly, truly hard. And I think any job you can't do is hard. Um, I can't, I don't know how to be an electrician. That'd be hard. I think it'd be really hard. Because I don't know how to do that stuff. It's high pressure. The beauty of this job is if, if this goes badly, I'll blame you guys. I will. I'm going to walk out, I'll talk to the other comedians, and I'm going to say, fucking shit crowd. Um, <laughs> Oh, fucking, they were terrible, man. They were the worst crowd. They were shit. Uh, that's how it rolls. But uh, an electrician does not have that luxury, do they? They can't rewire your house incorrectly. It burns down. They can just walk back to the van and go, shit, family. Um, doesn't work that way. So, toughest job in the world, electrician. Uh, it's just good to be here. I see people must be on holidays. That's nice. Couples. Loving couples, I love to see that. Um, except for me, hard to, hard to look at. Um, no, because I lost my wife. She's not dead. Um, we're in IKEA, and uh, I haven't lost her. Um, what the fuck is that place? That is everywhere in the world. I know it's the same shit. They build these labyrinth type mechanisms. Uh, to force you into it's like it's like something from ancient Greek mythology, except without being a minotaur in the middle. Uh, it's it's a it's a it's a coat rack called the Flugenfurken, um, which is just as scary. Um, but but they're fucking terrible. And if you got if you did get stuck in there, if you did get lost in there, you would die. You would die, and no one would find you. That's why they sell fucking meatballs because they don't want to lose customers. They're going to feed you if they can. I don't know where to, where to get anyone. How am I going to find my wife in that? Like, you know, there's, there's a path to go, but you can cut through the path. And I don't know where she is. And I'm panicked. I'm panicking at this moment. Where, where's my wife? What am I going to do? And I'm just thinking, this is too hard to go looking. I'll just have to just cut my losses. It's been good. It's been good. We've had a good run. And the kids will, they'll remember her. Um, we've got photographs. So I, I, I just started to freak out. It, it, has anyone watched that, that guy, Dead Grills, Man vs. Wild? You seen? Yeah, yeah. Man, that guy's amazing, that British guy. And they drop him in the jungle. He couldn't survive in Ikea. I'm telling you now. They don't drop him in the Do you know who he is? Do you like that? Do you know the guy? He's great. He's, a, he's an English guy, former SAS commando. Drop him in the jungle, that's what they do. He's like, it's really dangerous out here. It's really hot out here. If I get some water soon, I'll probably die. But that, that's, people say he's a survivalist. Um, I just think he's one of those fucking whiny English travellers. Um, <laughs> it's really hot out here. Um, but that's he's like, oh, if I don't get some food soon, I'll die. I'm like, just turn around. Ask the fucking cameraman for a granola bar, you know? I'm not sure he's got one in his bag. This just could be a lot easier. But the uh, but, but anyway, point being, Bear Grylls would not survive in Ikea. But I, I went with some Bear Grylls kind of, you know, uh, techniques in mind. Because I remember an episode where he said, if you're ever separated from the group, stay put until help comes. That's it. Stay put until help comes. That's his advice. And clearly he's never been to Ikea. Because help does not come. I don't know where they're like, uh, hiding somewhere with their paper measuring tapes. Um, but, but, but I thought, I know, I know what I can do. 
I just called my wife on the phone. It's 2019. Uh, but I couldn't do that because I left my phone in the car. Couldn't go back to the car because I didn't have enough water. I wouldn't have made it. Um, <laughs> so I was sort of, you know, wandering around, wondering where the hell she is. And it was a weird moment because this old man walked into my area of the bed things. Uh, I like to call it an aisle, but it's, it wasn't an aisle. It was, it was an area. It was, it was someone's bedroom, I think. It looked like that. Um, and this old man, he was walking around. He was, I could tell he was old because he looked old. That's a giveaway. Uh, he was quite wrinkly and he wore his pants about there. Um, kind of looked like a scrotum with slacks. Uh, and he was, he was lost. He was lost. Okay? He, he, could, he looked lost like old people. He was just walking around. And he made old man noises. Old man noises, which are different from middle aged noises. Um, you know, middle aged noises is when you drop your wallet and you gotta pick it up. Uh, I'm 44 now, so I'm doing that. Uh, you drop your wallet and you just give it, yeah, that's unnecessary. Uh, that's what you do. That's what you do now. Old men don't do that because they don't even pick it up. They just go, fuck it, it's done. Um, I'll never see that again. But old man noises are where an old man just moves a little bit, just a little bit, and makes an old man noise. It's a, it's a noise that comes out of his mouth without his permission or consent. <laughs> old man noise. Uh, old women don't do it. So old men. It's just like if he turns around and moves a bit. <laughs> that, 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 that. Any, any movement. <laughs> If they, if they move enough, it sounds like a sentence. It's a... <laughs> old men everywhere sound like that. Um, it's a, and then he said another little thing, this old bloke, this old man. He said, oh, oh, oh dear, oh dear. That's what he said. Now, in Australia, I don't know if it's the same everywhere, old people have extra syllables. Um, the word he said was, oh dear. But he said, oh dear, there were three. So I think, I don't know what it is, it's some kind of superannuation scheme. They get lots of syllables. This old man was lost and he was confused. And I thought, are you okay? I said, are you okay, buddy? Are you okay? Are you all right? He goes, oh, oh I can't find my wife anywhere. I thought, shit, how long's he been here for? <laughs> I thought, are there more of us? Is he the leader? Um, is there a clubhouse that we, that we meet at? Uh, I don't know what's going on. But, but I, I said, look, it's okay, man. It's okay. I said, I can't find my wife either. She's somewhere in here. I can't find her. Uh, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna look for your wife, we're gonna look for my wife. How's that? He goes, good, good idea. I said, good. He said, what's your wife look like? He said, I said, well, my wife's mid-30s. She's a yoga teacher, she's quite fit. She's wearing a little denim, denim mini skirt and a, a tight white T-shirt. What's your wife look like? He said, oh, don't, don't worry about my wife, let's just look for your wife. <laughs> That's right, yes, I knew that would happen. Um, oh, there you go, that's good. Um, it's, uh, is, that, is that my time? Is that sort of red light? Maybe it's not, maybe it's another light. Um, uh, I actually, uh, for a, a little uh, community service message for, uh, for any Americans in the room, if you know any American actors, by the way, um, who, who attempt an Australian accent. Can you tell them, uh, fucking stop? Because um, <laughs> you can't do it. Um, no, no, there's a lot of Australian actors uh, that can help out. We can send some more, more Hemsworths over if that's what you need. There are, there are three here at the moment. Um, we've got a lot of them back home. They're at, at pest levels. Um, we have to, we're gonna put Hemsworth baits out to keep the numbers down. Um, we can send one over because I've noticed that when an American actors do an Australian accent, it tends to sound more like a South London chimney sweep who went to a South African finishing school. It's, uh, it doesn't work, it's like, oh yeah, you're a fucking chimney with kangaroos out it. Um, it's just not what we sound like. Go to, go to the Hemsworth level, that's what they sound, that's what we sound like. We all kind of kind of sound like Hemsworths, all right? And we look felt like them too, mostly, all right? Um, yeah, mostly. Uh, so yeah, that's what the level is. Don't go for the Steve Irwin Crocodile Hunter kind of version. 
going for the Hemsworth. Because basically Steve Irwin is what an Australian sounds like you know, when they see something that's going to kill them. So, <laughs> no, sorry, I'm that's panic. Okay, Hemsworth's like, yeah, I'm fucking pretty cool, I'm pretty chilled over here, and I've got abs. Um, I'm still Australian. But, uh, what the fuck's that in Spain? <laughs> so, if you buy a stereo in, in Australia, it's got two settings. It's got Hemsworth and Irwin. So, it does. You turn it from, you know, it's like, hello ladies, that's a nice pair of shoes you're wearing. What are those crocs? Ah! Um, just so you know, that's how it works. So, uh, so cut it out. Uh, so it's about, it's about probably time for me to to get off now, I think there might be. It's been, uh, it's been lovely uh, being here for, for this multicultural audience. It's, it's an absolute pleasure. Uh, and, just, and just so you know, yes, I can do an American accent, okay? <laughs> Australians, we can. Are you guys American? <laughs> Laughing. Laughing. Do you want to hear my American accent? Yeah. It's, it's fucking good. Because I've been watching a lot of television, a lot of American television, mostly news. And I nailed it, absolutely nailed the accent. My a absolutely, absolutely spot, uh, fantastic, so close. I got it, I got it down, it is good. It's good. I got it back there, so you guys, it's fantastic, it is a great accent. Um, when I talk like that, everyone fucking leaves though, so I'm not going to do that anymore. You guys have been great, I'm so Kennedy.